people, it's Victoria, and in today's video, I wanted to dive into something that I noticed within the Acolyte, which I found pretty interesting, and something that I think has been going on with lots of different TV shows and things like this recently, and it's this idea that it feels sort of like the show is speaking more to the viewers than to the characters within the show itself. Like, are the characters really interacting even in the right way where it makes sense what they're talking about? Or is the show actually rooted in this idea of wanting to teach the audience something so much so that they kind of dwindled away the path to get there, the path to teaching the audience this, and it's just kind of blatant facts being presented to us that we should believe this and we should think this and technically it is kind of trying to reform the idea of Jedi in our minds and the idea of this dark and this light side and the idea of all these different things. I just feel like as I was watching the show, which I did actually end up watching episode 5 and 6 because I was kind of getting more and more interested in this way that they're portraying the dark side in this show because I think it's very interesting and it's very smart. It's very sort of conniving and the way they use certain words even when describing the dark side, finding freedom in the dark side, accepting your darkness, and all these different things, I think they're trying to use many different it words in society, if you will, to sort of seed and embed within the audience a deeper message that they're going to continue building on, or at least I believe they would continue building on in future Star Wars projects, if those projects would have been made, which it looks like now, since the audience does not seem to like the direction they're taking, they're kind of backtracking on all of those projects. But still, I think it's kind of an interesting concept and thing to realize is that they oftentimes use these sort of words and these sort of ideas that are popular within our culture at the moment to sow seeds of different ideas within us that makes us question what is right and what is wrong, even within our media and our entertainment. Loaded language is a general term for words or phrases that have deep emotional associations for the listener. Through repetition, these leaders ingrain an intense emotional association in their followers psyche, so that eventually, just invoking a short phrase can instantly summon powerful feelings of beauty, love, fear, or hatred. It's like creating linguistic buttons that can be pushed to generate an immediate response. In her book, Montel offers evidence that these linguistic tactics have seeped out from cults and into wider society. They do it incrementally, in a series of small steps that take you farther and farther from what you know to be true. It's not about breaking the will, they were altering the sense of reality. It makes us question, well, perhaps the dark side isn't as bad as we thought originally that they were. Perhaps they actually have a point. Perhaps the Jedi are really evil, which I will admit that I do think that the Jedi have had their own faults and do have their own faults. But I don't think that those faults are so great to that the level of corruption they are trying to imply within the Jedi Order itself is even there. I've been waiting for you. I do believe that they have sort of hindered on this idea of fear too much, where they have sort of become afraid to be afraid themselves, the Jedi. Thus, they want to hinder their own connections to people rather than working through each other to find strength to still have connections with people, but still have courage and strength through the Force that the Force can give them the responsibility and the self-discipline to not become too attached to those people that it will lead them into the dark side. And that is something I want to make a video on more in depth in the future, but that is one of the ideas that people have sort of played around with in their minds with the Jedi and why they have sort of fallen 
fallen into a more corrupt way of being than the position that they originally held when they were first created. But aside from that, I think that the point of this, as I was mentioning, is sort of very interesting because I do feel like the show is actively trying to get a message across to the audience rather than having the characters get messages across to each other, if you understand what I mean. It feels like it was so drastically put together and frantically put together to try to instill these thoughts within the audience instead of trying to instill thoughts within the characters that we can then build off of in our own imaginations and our own understanding of what is going on in the show. And that's why I think that a lot of different people are, you know, reviewing the show here on YouTube and saying that they do not like it that much or they think the writing is bad or the acting is bad or something just feels off about the show. I I think the thing that we don't really realize is that what feels off about the show is the fact that it was written to the audience in sort of more like a letter format rather than actually being a storyline that the audience can follow to find these different truths and these different interesting topics and these different ideas that they want to portray to us. It's more like a letter being written directly to us telling us exactly how things are and why this is bad or why that is bad. And while everyone wants to dive deeper into the Old Republic and the ideas of the corruption behind the Jedi in certain ways, but I do feel like it's being overly emphasized that the Jedi are so corrupt when really they aren't as corrupt as they want us to think. They want us to think that the Jedi are so corrupt that it's actually better off to not be on the light side at all, to just be plain simple in the middle, to accept your darkness. I've accepted my darkness. What have you done? yours. And I don't know if that is put there to portray that he's good and this is a good thing that the Jedi Order should learn to accept and acknowledge or if it is because he's just a bad guy. But that's when things get confusing is when you blur the lines too much between what is right and what is wrong because the audience can't tell where you're trying to push us in what direction. Don't do this. You did this to yourself. You followed a false master. So did you. They're just kind of little seeds and little hints of things they want us to have stand out in our minds, but then when you put it together as a whole, it starts to become muddied and makes you wonder, what are they really trying to say in this show? For the first time, this Star Wars project and show feels more like a letter to the audience itself, rather than an actual storyline playing out between the characters within it. I will not turn and you'll be forced to kill me. If that is your destiny. And that letter is drenched with these confusing concepts of acceptance and love. Things that we are taught in life are important and valuable. What kind of life is that, huh? A life without purpose? Without love? Without family? He led you nowhere. And they're sort of trying to get into our minds and alter what we should be thinking about them and the way we should be looking at these things. Rather than showing us how the characters experience these different things and how the characters are viewing and looking at these things. Hence, our protagonist Osha is literally knocked out after the delivery of this dialogue, not even giving her a moment to think and respond. Because this is not dialogue, it's designed to speak to the audience. Which honestly is kind of funny to me, because when I first started watching episode 5 and saw this scene, something about it looked familiar to me, and then I realized that she kind of reminds me of Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Especially with that little droid that she uses to help her get information and such. The pip droid. I noticed the way you take care of him. Yes. Talk to him love him even though he's just a machine i've always been like that even when i was little who do we ask for help when we don't know which way to go map that's right i'm the map i'm the map i'm the map and it just kind of reminded me of dora the explorer with all her little pockets that she has the droid in and then also 
fact that made this even funnier is when she straightened herself and I could see her hairstyle. And isn't it kind of funny that in a way it references to that? Because as I said, this like Dora the Explorer was designed to speak directly to the audience and influence the audience's opinions on what is going on in the show, not the actual characters. Which one is Dragon Mountain? like a bunch of dialogue that is more directed towards the audience because it doesn't really go anywhere. It keeps going and going and then not continuing onward further. It's just like darkness, accept your darkness, you need to be open to your feelings, this and that. And then they have all these different things that they drop, like the master soul. Is there something corrupt behind him? Is he having something that he did something wrong at some point in his Jedi career? Is this Jedi path he's on leading him in the wrong direction? But I feel like oftentimes if you keep pushing it off, it's not actually getting the message across of what you want people to know. It feels more like everything keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed off. What did you do? My legs play. You can tell me. want to stay standing out in your mind as you watch the show so that you'll kind of forget and you'll just continue to think yes these concepts sound right the way that they're portraying them well maybe the dark guy is actually good maybe he's not as bad as we thought if you keep me here soul comes to you he's found me before and his strength in the force is very powerful you think that his strength that's your strength in the force osha Someone ought to teach you that. And he always has these little conniving ways that he will continue to rationalize the different things that he's done and the things that he continues to do. You murdered my friends. I killed Jedi. I killed those who threatened my existence. Trying to rationalize it even to the, one of the main characters, Osha herself, trying to rationalize his own path to the dark side so that he can project it onto her as well. Why do you love people who can only go so far? Who can't go as deep as you can? The Jedi teach there's only one way to access the Force. And if you don't do it their way, it fades. But there is another way. That's the path to the dark side. Because what he really wants is someone to help him kill Jedi. That's what he wants. And so he assumes that because it didn't work out with her sister, maybe he can make it work out with her in some way. And that's why she's saying, I am not as easily corrupted as my sister is. And he's trying to just plant these little seeds in her of, you know, finding power within yourself, like I covered in my last video. And all these different things that sound good on the outside and from a surface level perspective, but when you dive deeply into them you realize that it is true that the Jedi were more on the light side even in their certain corruptions that they may have they are still mainly centered on the light side they do have their fears which they should not be leaning into but they still try to hold their lives together through the force and through what is right and through the light they're not actively trying to be bad as the Sith do and as the Sith have done throughout Star Wars especially not actively trying to manipulate people constantly which is a interesting trait of all the Sith you'll notice that they are always trying to manipulate people they always want people to do what they want they always want to turn on each other also as George Lucas put it himself every time you get two Sith together you have the, the, the master you have the apprentice and who went other apprentices always trying to recruit another apprentice to join with him to kill the master. Luke, you can destroy the Emperor. He has foreseen this. 
It is your destiny. Join me. Together, we can rule the galaxy as father and son. And the master knows that he's basically everybody below him wants his job. Your heat has made you powerful. They want to turn on each other as soon as they gain power together because they just can't have that. They can't have that feeling of that they are not in total control. You can learn from this bad one. She's a loyal pupil. Which is really the root cause of many personality disorders and different psychological disorders in real life have to do with this idea of control and wanting to have control over things. And then when you lean more and more into that, that's when you can be led deeper and deeper into these different types of personality disorders that are harmful to you or harming others around you. And I did actually cover that in another video, which I will probably leave linked here or at the end of this video. But anyway, in that video I also covered other stuff about the Force and Star Wars, as well as talking about balance and what I think balance is really supposed to represent in Star Wars that many of us kind of overlook. And I actually took some different personality disorders and used them as sort of a level to explain and show what balance truly means. So if you want to see that video, be sure to stay tuned for it. I think this one will come out before that one, but it will be coming out shortly, so stay tuned. I am currently in the editing process of it right now, so you can definitely stay tuned and see that video. It also took a lot of effort and time for me to put into it, so please stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see that. It will cover a lot of different concepts that I think you'll find interesting. I have some notes here that I'm reading also about the show and the episodes that I wrote while I was watching. Again, especially as I was watching this episode 5, I think a lot of these different words and these sneaky little ways of trying to get into our minds and sort of corrupt our way of thinking are present throughout episode 5, especially with this Sith guy trying to sort of just twist things slightly. As he's using words like, I've accepted my darkness, what have you done with yours? And things like that, trying to imply that in order to be at a full balance yourself, you need to accept certain darknesses of your own self. Which yes, maybe the Jedi were suppressing some emotions at some point or another. Unless if you use those emotions for bad, they're not technically a bad thing and needed to suppress. You just need to learn how to control your your emotions. And the thing about the dark side is that they don't actually learn how to control their emotions, they just use them haywire and out of control to gain more power through that. But when you actually learn how to control your own emotions, that is when you can actually have more power because you are in control of your own actions. When we look at people like sociopaths or narcissists, they're usually in a spiral of uncontrolled emotions. And the funny thing is that these types of people will look at everyone else and tell them that there's something wrong, you are overly emotional, you have a problem, and all these different things. But when you truly look at it, you realize that it's not you who is out of control of your own emotions. You are having accurate responses to the complete haywire that this person is throwing towards you through their actions in their life. And oftentimes these people like narcissists will be very driven by anger just as the Sith are driven by anger in Star Wars. It's this thing where you are controlled by your emotions and through anger and through all these different things so much so that you actually have less control than the people around you that you point your fingers at and say they have less control than you. But there is another way. Below the surface of consciousness are powerful emotions. Anger, fear, loss, desire. That's the path to the dark side. Semantics. No, it's actually you, because when you don't control your anger, when you don't control your fear, those are actually the craziest emotions to leave in charge of your mind. Because those emotions can truly wreak havoc across your whole life. They are kind of just out of control. So why don't we quit standing around and do something? Like what, genius? And they just act on whims based on what you're feeling in the moment. What is it? Uh, oh, nothing. Just the best idea ever. What? 
all the good core memories were made in Minnesota. Ergo, we go back to Minnesota and make more. Ta-da! Wait, wait, wait. You're saying we run away? Well, I wouldn't call it that. I'd call it the Happy Core Memory Development Program. You can't be serious! Instead of actually truly taking a step back, finding peace within yourself, and thinking about the different decisions and where they're leading you in life. And that is the important thing about the Jedi, is this peace that they promote and that they try to find. Whereas with the Sith, it's more focused on finding this strength within uncontrolled emotions. And that is what it is. It's not about who you are as a person on the inside. It's not about accepting what you're feeling. It's about using those feelings in a spiral to harm the people around you especially. And you may not even realize that you're doing this, using your emotions to harm the people around you. Her teacher hasn't even seen Riley all day. What, what was she wearing last? Do you even remember what... Oh, we were worried sick. Where have you been? It's so late. But when you continue feeding into those emotions that are negative and that are bad, you are inevitably harming the people around you. And you're keeping yourself in this spiral of fear and anger and all these things that keep you in this kind of crazy spiral in your own mind that makes you not even be able to recognize or realize the truth behind what's going on in your life. Sometimes these people like narcissists will even make up memories or not fully remember what happened in the moment of their haywire because they were so frantic in their own emotions and not really thinking about the situation at hand and what was truly going on. So much so that they'll make things up and assume, well, somebody must have done something really wrong to get me this riled up and raged. But the truth is, no one did anything wrong. They just took everything out of context and went crazy. I love you! Liar! No! You're with him! You brought him here to kill me! No! Let her go, Anakin! I should have known the Jedi were plotting to take over! Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil! From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! And then afterwards, when faced with the consequences of their actions, it's just... They can't accept it because they can't even see or understand because they were so blinded by their own emotions. Obi-Wan told me terrible things. What things? He said you've turned to the dark side. That you killed younglings. Obi-Wan is trying to turn you against me. The Jedi turned against me. Don't you turn against me. Obi-Wan was right. Changed. I don't know you anymore. And that is exactly what our own emotions will do to us sometimes. Blind us and keep us so cold and frozen off from the truth of what's going on that we just don't even know what happened. And that is the importance of not allowing yourself to be controlled by your emotions. Which is again another thing that is trying to be portrayed throughout this. The idea of accepting the darkness within yourself to balance it out. And just as George Lucas put it, you can't truly find balance unless if you are at peace. Unless if you keep those emotions in check. Those emotions that could cause rage within you and cause you to get into these crazy spirals. You need to keep them in check or else you're just going to be all over the place like some tornado ripping things up and destroying your own life without even realizing it. Just as these Sith do. Sometimes I wonder. What is the mindset behind the Sith? Because, and what is the mindset behind all of these supervillains you see in movies and all these things? It's like, once you get what you want, once you overcome everything and overthrow the superheroes or the good people around you, you're gonna have nothing left. You're just gonna have, you know, ruling what? There's not even gonna be anyone left to rule, especially if you destroy everyone in the process. Purposeless emptiness. It's a vacuum, isn't it? Just. Think about it, we have it all, yet we have nothing. Always thirsty, never satisfied. And that is something else that 
that I wanted to mention, which is this sort of double standard of the dark side. And I think that it's very prevalent throughout the Star Wars movies that the dark side, as soon as it gets to you, it wants to keep you there and it wants to erase you. It gives you this gift and this idea of achieving power and getting all this power for yourself and it's for you, it's for you, but really it's for whatever master is ahead of you. I don't trust you. Nor should you, but you should learn to trust yourself. And whatever master is ahead of you, it's for whatever master is ahead of them, which is truly just plain evil and the dark side. The dark side is getting what it wants through giving people this false hope and this false idea of finding power and empowerment and acceptance and love, which is fake. The love that the dark side could provide to you is completely fake. There's nothing true about it. There's nothing real about it. It's just surface level. It's just, if you do what I want, I'll give you something, which is exactly the kind of mindset we see in these different psychological disorders like narcissism. It's all about finding things and getting things for themselves. So even when they give you love, when they give you stuff, Kurtosis, handy against lightsabers, but also a sensory deprivation headpiece. Like we used as young legs. It blocks out all your senses. So it's just you and the force. And what you bring with you. Try it on. Well, they're just expecting that that's what you want. They're expecting that they're giving you this so that you'll stick around and so that you'll continue to play their game and help them gain the things that they want in life. <sighs> Can you give the same pitch to my sister? I made a mistake with me. I thought she wanted more than just revenge. I thought she wanted what I want. What do you want? The power of two. I want a pupil, an acolyte. But this one <gasps> went back on our deal. They don't truly know or understand the true meaning of love and the true meaning behind that love. And that is why I found it interesting when the Sith guy says that he has no name. What are you? I have no name. The true core of the dark side and of darkness is to erase you. It doesn't want you to exist. It actually hates you and despises you. And it does it secretly. It secretly hates you and despises you. It's secretly jealous of all that is within you, so much so that it wants to erase you. So it convinces you into thinking that this darkness really is you, that your most innate desires are all that you are. Your desire to be afraid and your desire to be angry and all these different things are just who you are and you should accept that and you should feed into that and you should really just rely on that because that is who you are, right? That is exactly what he told Osha. These emotions are who you are and the Jedi are denying you that. The Jedi are denying you who you are. Why do you still think of yourself as a Jedi? They didn't want you. It's not true. I left. Why? Because I chose to. Are you sure about that? Let me go. What you're feeling right now, this anger, this pain, this is who you are. The Jedi saw it, and that's why they threw you away. But it's not true. The Jedi are trying to help you to reach towards greater things. They're trying to help you to reach higher than what you are alone. And you know, that brings me back to this idea of the devil. You see, people, as God explains, were created in his image. And I think that a way that this is shown through our actions is how we're able to create things. Because as you can see, evil can only destroy things. Evil only wants to cause destruction around it. 
but when you are good you start to create beautiful things and you create and add beauty to your life and to the world around you and that is the thing that God actually designed us people for I think because if we look around we can see all the beautiful things that people can make and people can just come up with something and just poof it exists out of nothing practically like how did these people discover how to make airplanes fly through the sky with all of these different analogies about thrust and wind and all these different things combining to make their dreams come true and to create things that seemed impossible before and these are amazing things and amazing feats that people are able to do and I think it's because we are created in the image of God we are created in the image of a creator who is making beauty and who made beauty around us already in our earth and through our lives and when you really get to the bottom of it you'll realize that the devil's whole reasoning in tearing people down is because he was jealous of us he promised people that they would be able to be like God when in a way I feel like people were already like God and that's what made the devil jealous because he was not made in the same image as God himself he was an angel therefore he had different duties and that doesn't make him less valuable than people that doesn't make angels less valuable than people it just means that they have different duties and different things that God designed them for that maybe us people can't get in on or do also but you know the devil was very jealous and annoyed by this fact that us people were made in the image of God and that's why he wants to destroy us so much that's why he spends all his time trying to trick us and trying to sow seeds of lies in our heads and trying to so hard sow these seeds in that we start to destroy our own selves in the process Wiley's islands of personality they're all down oh this is bad this is madness erase ourselves even, just as we see Darth Vader doesn't want to hear his old name, Anakin Skywalker. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. When Anakin Skywalker was an amazing hero of the Jedi when he was around during the Clone Wars. He helped so many people and he did so much through those wars to help people that, you know, he became a name that everyone around the galaxy knew and loved. Yet for some reason, Darth Vader doesn't want to hear that name. And why? It's because Sidious himself pushed it into his own mind over and over again that that name meant nothing and that he is new now, he needs to do something completely different, he needs to change everything about himself, he is now in power and Darth Vader is much better than Anakin Skywalker was and all these different lies, you know, to the point where this Sith guy now in this show, Acolyte, he says he doesn't have a name, he is just blank because he is free, because that is what freedom is. Freedom is to be blank. And you know what? No, that's not true freedom. True freedom is about looking inside yourself and finding your worth in God and finding the worth in who you are and who he made you to be. There is so much worth in that and so much worth in you and the devil and the dark side just as through Star Wars want to trick you slowly into believing that they have greater power for you that you are defined by your own emotions and the power you can find through these uncontrolled waves of emotions that you may have and find which it's fine to have emotions it's fine to feel your emotions but it's also important to realize that you need to have control over those emotions because those emotions don't deserve to have have control over you and the dark side does not deserve to have control over you because that's what it is it's about erasing yourself erasing your true name erasing who you are and replacing it with something that someone else wants you to be which is exactly what the dark side is the dark side wants you to be
be blank so that they can control you because you are blank so that you have space within yourself for them to work through you instead of be all that you were created to be in God to make beautiful things they just want you to be destroying things for them and in the name of them and in the name of yourself which is really not even the name of yourself rather the name of the devil himself the name of whatever Sith comes before you it's not about you it's about serving another Sith and another Sith and continuing on this cycle and even when we look at this idea of balance and finding good and bad and light and evil and all these things if we even look at Rey from the sequel trilogy she was tempted too to join the dark side and if anything she had a part of the dark side within her being Palpatine's very own granddaughter don't be afraid of who you are it's time to let old things die the Sith the Jedi the rebels let it all die so if she was Palpatine's granddaughter that means she has a literal blood connection to the Sith Yet she decided within her own self that she was not going to take that path. Don't do this, Ben. Please don't go this way. And that is something that's so beautiful because anyone, any person, anywhere can decide that they're not going to take the path of darkness, that they're going to turn towards the light. And it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what your family or your relatives have done. It matters what you think and how you want to live your life. And it matters because God is able to renew you, give you strength, and give you a new heart when you turn towards Him. And you can have the strength to turn towards the light side and turn away from these family members that may be slipping away or may be doing bad things or these people who are narcissists in your life maybe trying to cause havoc and wreak craziness throughout your life. What have you done? I, I did what I needed to do for you, for our family. Everything you've ever done has been for yourself. You were the violent one. You started that fire. You can realize that they are in the wrong and that you are going to withdraw yourself and put yourself directly into God and focus all your energy on God and the fact that he is with you and the fact that you know your new brothers and sisters it doesn't matter what your relatives what family members you have on earth that may be pulling you into different things or maybe pulling you down and just bashing you and wanting to destroy you in your life that happens too a lot of times with these narcissistic type relationships and the fact is that when you turn to God you don't have to be worried about these family members that were tearing you down at one point or another or were being rude to you or leading you into bad things or are led into bad things themselves you can realize in your own heart and realize that God has given you many other people to rely on and to find strength in all of these lives lost tonight again all because of you the Jedi got what they deserved those Jedi were more my family than you ever were. Just as Rey realized with all of the Jedi who were actively encouraging her and inspiring her in their words and through their words when she asked the Force to be with her, it showed her that all of the Jedi before her are with her and there are many more Jedi in the future who will still be with her and who will still continue to guide her and help her to reach for greater things and help her to reach into this power of the light. Every Jedi who ever lived, lives in you. The Force surrounds you, Rey. Let it guide you. We stand behind you, Rey. You don't have to stay and stick around with your specific grouping of your family members that happen to be in the wrong, that happen to be against you in this life. You can expand and move forward and find new strength and new encouragement and new connection through the people who also believe the same things as you, the people who are leaning towards the light, who are leaning towards the true love. You can find strength in those people because they are there for you and they are there to encourage you because they are also following the will of the Force, as Qui-Gon put it. They are following the will of the Force so that they can just do great and beautiful things through that Force. And that Force wants to encourage you. It wants you to be at a level where you are excited and you are 
are overjoyed and you are ready to fight the good fight for that force and to not be consumed by your own emotions that can be so scary and consuming at times. And you know, it's a dangerous concept when you think about it because even as he was saying, the Sith guy, as Osha was asking him about the Jedi Master Soul, who obviously she did form a deep connection with through her training under him as a Padawan, he was wondering, why didn't you ask about your sister first? But truthfully, it's not about your family members in your life because especially nowadays, I think we can all agree that there are many family members in our lives who are not on the same page as us at all, who are very lost in their ways and who are very you know, deceptive, and you know, all these different kinds of people in the world who are trying to tear others down and tear others apart. And that is not what God wants for you and where God wants you to be. He wants to lift you higher and he wants to lift you into greater things than where you're being stuck spinning in the circles of these family members who may have personality disorders or whatever they have that is causing you to just get stuck in these tornadoes in life that are just spinning you around and round in circles and keeping you away from where God wants you to be. And it's like with this girl, she realized that her sister May was not good. Her sister May did all these things and was always leaning more into her own emotions. She was always leaning more into her own emotional habits and these things that make her angry and all these different things. And she would be, you know, kind of physically violent you could even see with her sister. And so of course it's like when people do things that push you away actively, especially when you're trying to express yourself and talk about things through yourself. I don't know if I want to be a witch. Of course you want that. No, you want that. And they're kind of trying to punch you down and push you away. That is going to push you away, especially from your own family members as well. It's going to push you away and make you feel like, what is my true connection to these people, really? If they are keeping the doorway open to all of this negativity, why should I continue allowing them to have an impact on my life and continue allowing them to spread manipulations towards me when they're just trying to get me stuck in these spirals? It is definitely a dangerous concept of just focusing solely on your own family members and the people that that seemingly seem to be around to help you, but sometimes it's not the most help coming from your own family members. Just like with Luke and Darth Vader himself, it's like Luke had to put up some boundaries between himself and his father. He told him, I'm not gonna fall to the dark side like you. I don't care, I can see that you're in the wrong. I'm gonna tell you I still love you and I still care about you, but I'm not gonna let you get away with the stuff that you tried to get away with just now. I'm not gonna let you just, you know, get away with these types of things. Just as Osha was telling her sister May in the show, she can't just let her get away with murder. You're a criminal, May. You must pay for your crimes. What are you doing? What I came here to do. Arrest you. Don't do this. You did this to yourself. Did you kill Sol? No. Did you kill May? No. Interesting you ask about him first, though. And a Bible verse that I actually wanted to share with you guys, which I think explains this concept and ideology of the Sith pretty well, even though it's a Bible passage, but it explains it pretty well. So before you click out of the video, if you don't know anything about Christianity, or you're curious about things about Christianity, or you're just angered by things about Christianity, then please stick around and listen to this Bible passage, because I think it shines a really nice light on the Sith, and I think it just clears things up a lot if you'll listen. So the Bible passage is actually Romans 1, and it's verse 18 through 25, and it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Notice, these men hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold things that are true, they try to act like they know the truth, but deep down it's centered in this concept and mindset of unrighteousness. 
and sort of trying to justify their own actions which are very harmful to the people around them. And these are the exact people that we need to look out for. These can be Christian people too, you know? Christian people can act like this as well. They can act like they know all this stuff about God and really their unrighteous actions are truly what is showing their true intentions. And their actions do not reflect God at all because they don't care about God, they don't know God, and therefore God does not know them. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Notice that their foolish heart was darkened, just as the Sith have their hearts darkened by the dark side as they continue to lean into that ideology and those ideas and concepts. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up into uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. Notice, these men are ones who changed the truth of God into a lie. These men who took the uncorruptible nature of God and corrupted it through their own ideologies and through their own understanding of things. Just as these Sith use the Force and try to sort of weave their way into it and use it as a method of control rather than, you know, use it for good as the Jedi do. Just as many Christian people and many denominations of Christian churches, I think we can all agree that the Catholic Church is a root to some of these problems throughout Christianity because they lean so much on this idea of power and giving power to a man rather than power to God, which is exactly what God demands. He demands for men to give him the authority. That way things can be just and things can be right and not for a man to take the authority himself because we can't control that authority and that authority will end up controlling us in the end as we continue to lean into it. You know, just as this guy, he is showing this scar on his back, the Sith. This is why I turned to the dark side, because I got this scar from my former Jedi Master, and they made me feel like a failure and all this stuff. But truthfully, I've never seen an instance where a Jedi has actually harmed or hurt their apprentice purposely, even because they saw the dark side within them or rising up within them. If we look at Luke Skywalker with Kylo Ren, he can even acknowledge and accept that he made the wrong decision in that moment. He shouldn't have acted out of fear. But then I looked inside, and it was beyond what I ever imagined. He would bring destruction and pain and death at the end of everything I love because of what he will become. And for the briefest moment of pure instinct, I thought I could stop it. It passed like a fleeting shadow. And I was left with shame. And with consequence. And the last thing I saw were the eyes of a frightened boy whose master had failed him. But you know, people are corruptible. That is why we can't rely on other people's opinions and thought processes on things. This is where this concept of relying on yourself is actually kind of true in a way, because you need to rely on yourself. You need to rely on your own connection with God all the time. Of course, you can have encouragement from the people around you, but once you start to fully rely on the people around you, then you may easily be deceived because just as the Bible says, there's many wolves in sheep's clothing that are trying to deceive us actively. Many people who want to deceive you because they are led by the dark side and they are led by evil. And that is why we have to be very present within our own minds and be very understanding of our own circumstances and the things that we can do and understand because it's very important to not allow ourselves to get twisted or corrupted through the things that other people may say. You wonder why I keep a rabbit cur such a place of power. A cur's weakness, properly manipulated, can be a sharp tool. 
that's why it's so important to be connected with God, to be talking to Him every day, to be asking Him things about your life every day. In every little circumstance, treat Him as a friend because that's who He wants to be. He wants to be a friend. He wants to be the force within you that's going to guide you into what's right and that's going to keep you away from these things that could corrupt you or corrupt your mindset that are scary and that do happen to many people today. But you know, just as if this guy got hit by a lightsaber from his former master or what have you, that was not accurate to the Jedi Code or anything the Jedi stand for. If anything, it is shown through Luke Skywalker's own reaction to overreacting and sensing darkness within his pupil. And you know, we still don't even know where the scar came from. It could have been between a battle between him and his master, or who knows. But you know, if some master was doing that, they were rooted in the dark side and rooted in, again, uncontrolled emotions themselves. Their lightness was being darkened by their own fear because they didn't know how to control it. It wasn't because, as he's trying to suggest, they simply chose to use the darkness within themselves in a worse way than he is because he's just defending himself against the Jedi who don't want him to be around. But again, it's like a circle spinning a circle with these people. It's like, I was defending myself, but why were you defending yourself in the first place is because the good people, the Jedi, were fighting against you because you actually want to kill everyone and because you actually just want power and to cause dictatorships and to rule over people, which is not fair and isn't right. The Senate in Star Wars actually works out pretty interestingly, I think, and pretty well concerning everything because it does have many different people trying to, you know, put their input into the decisions that are being made. And it's very hard to negotiate these kind of things and keep everything leveled and balanced all the time between what everyone wants to say and what everyone wants to hear. That's why another thought that Anakin had before he fell to the dark side was this thought of, you know, why can't one person just make everything right the way it should be? The, the trouble is that people don't always agree. Well, then they should be made to. By whom? Who's going to make them? I don't know. Someone. But sometimes it's more difficult than that. It's harder than that because there are many different people that have been deceived into different things, deceived into different opinions, and it's hard to get them all on the same boat. But then as soon as you start getting just one person to represent the whole galaxy, that starts to become a dictatorship. Sounds an awful lot like a dictatorship to me. Well, if it works because what if people disagree with this or that? So it's like Anakin's original thought process on this was that, oh, well, maybe it would be good for someone to just go out there and make everything right. We need a system where the politicians sit down and discuss the problem, agree what's in the best interest of all the people, and then do it. But it's difficult for someone to stay, to have that much power all to themselves, and to stay in the right themselves. Which is similar to that Bible verse that says that it's difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I think that that is reflective of this idea of power. And the more power that you have, the harder it will be for you to respect others and to even respect God yourself because you have all this power and you think that you can use this power to control things. I have brought peace to the Republic. I am more powerful than the Chancellor. I, I can overthrow him. And together you and I can rule the galaxy make things the way we want them to be. And the more control you have over things, the more control you want over things. And it's just a difficult thing to be humble in that when you have so much power and when you have been given so much power. That's kind of why it's important to always keep things more sort of divided between the people and divided between who's going to say what we should do here or what we should do there. It needs to be more of a division in making decisions. That way it's not all just on the hinges of one person that is going to start to fall into corruption because of that power. All of this power they have over many people through themselves. And again, that is something amazing about the Jedi because they were not centered on having all of this power for themselves as sort of trying to be portrayed through certain words in this show and 
lines in this show that the Jedi have all this power and they sort of use it against people sometimes, but the interesting thing is that they do not center themselves on this power. What they are centered on is finding power in the Force and finding power in something greater than them that is going to guide them towards what is right and what goes right between everyone in the galaxy that they are supposed to be taken care of. In fact, if they were to center themselves on finding power for themselves, that is exactly what would put them out of balance in the Force. Which I will touch on this more in my future video. As I said, I am making one about the balance of the Force and what it truly represents. So you can stay tuned for that one. But basically all I wanted to say here is that that would put them out of balance if they are focused on this power. But the truth is they are not focused on having this kind of political power over people. They are focused on using a power for the greater good of others and for protecting others and for, you know, keeping others safe and protecting the whole galaxy as a whole. You know, there's some other Bible verses as well that I would like to share as finishing off this video. And it's these Bible verses that talk about the end times. And yes, I do believe we are living very close to the end times as a Christian myself, just seeing all the different things that people are doing in life and the different ways that I feel like selfishness is truly starting to rule this world more and more and more. And if we look at what the Bible says, this is exactly what it points towards, all these different things. I actually had a commenter on one of my videos say that they were noticing all this stuff not only through Star Wars, but through so many different forms of media they were watching, that it's always this twisting, and this twisting, and this twisting of what is right and wrong. Well, everything's just gray. Let's just celebrate what is gray and not think about what's right and what's wrong anymore. Let's not think about what's light and what's dark anymore. Let's try to think about what is in the middle and what's gray, because that is what is right. And anyone who wants to say on one side or the other is wrong, which I think that is a very silly concept and a very confusing idea. That's why when we watch media nowadays, we're kind of confused by it because it doesn't make sense. The stories they're trying to portray don't make sense because they truly don't make sense. It doesn't make sense to not have what is right and what is wrong. And yes, to shine light on what is corrupt in the right as well, but that doesn't mean that the whole of the light is corrupt. As people, we are all corrupt. But the truth of God and who he is and what he stands for is not corrupt. And so it may be portrayed badly through certain people's actions, but if you hold it up to the truth of the light of where it's coming from, then you will realize that it is actually in the right. And no one can fully achieve that perfection in this life, but that doesn't mean that the light isn't even worth striving for at all. And you know, even when watching these Marvel superhero movies, I started to notice that all of these different things, it's like they're really trying to just shade everything over in different shades of gray. They're trying to erase things and just make things confusing to people, I feel like, and to try to slowly manipulate people into this ideology and thought process of, well, we can make exceptions for things because of this reason or because of that reason or, you know, that Sith guy he only killed them because they were against him and they're not letting him live freely in the power that he can hold. And truthfully, they were not trying to kill him. They were trying to prevent him from killing other people. It's like if you take a murderer and say, you're going to prison now, and they say, well, that isn't fair. You guys are so mean. Well, you murdered a bunch of people, so you don't deserve to stay out in society and, you know, have freedom anymore. You chose to give that freedom away when you decided to lean into this darkness that you decided to follow through with and just run with. Like, those people deserve to have punishments and to have justice for their actions. That doesn't mean they have to be killed themselves, but it does mean that they need to have punishments. They need to be secured and not just allowed to continue running around freely in society, wreaking havoc and continuing to wreak havoc on other people's lives who are living innocent lives as civilians trying to, you know, just exist. So this other Bible verse that I wanted to share with you is 2 Timothy 3 and it says, This know Execute also that in the last days 66. perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, Throw False him. accusers, no. incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, 
Traitors. High high minded. That's lovers of really pleasures free. more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. And again, it says further down, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Which I think is very interesting because I think that these dark siders, these Sith in life, this is exactly how they function. They are ever learning new things about how they can control their powers, how they can use their powers for their own benefit. But they are never coming to a knowledge of the truth of what is truly powerful. They are always just accepting themselves and getting lost and getting stuck in that. Because I think especially when you have pride in your own beliefs and your own knowledge, that is when you get stuck in things, especially when you have pride in your own emotions and you have pride in your own anger. Those are the worst things and that is exactly why the Bible teaches us to steer away from this pride and be more humble in ourselves and realizing how small we are in the universe and how we truly can't know everything as people. We are just small parts of God's grand design and he does promise to us that everything will be understood by us eventually. But why do we need to have all this power for ourselves right now? And this pride in our own decisions and our own thoughts when our own thoughts are so small in the grand universe we're living in. We can't wrap our heads around the things of this universe. There's so many things we don't know and don't understand. So it's kind of silly to be so obsessed with gaining more and more power. You know, so obsessed with continuous learning of all these different things we can fill our heads with but we forget the knowledge, the true knowledge of God and who he is and who he's taught us that he is through the Bible and through expressing himself through all of these different things that we can see easily in life if we truly look. And I encourage you, if you don't know that much about God, then look for him, search for him, strive to understand him because he wants you to understand him. He actually wants you to ask him who he is and he will make it abundantly clear to you. He will clear things up in ways you can't even imagine. You're going to have your mind blown when you actually sit for a second and ask God to reveal himself to you if he's really there because he is really there and he can show you. I've learned so much through my own faith that has truly stabled me and made me so strong. It's like my foundation of my faith is so strong, it truly cannot be broken. It is something that is so amazing and so empowering to have this strong foundation on faith in God because it is the truth. And when you dig deeper into that knowledge and deeper and deeper into that knowledge, you'll find how true it really is. And there's so much proof that they don't teach in schools. They teach evolution, which is a simple theory that actually has no real evidence. It's simply a theory so that we can shoo away the idea of God and just leave in people's minds this idea of, oh yes, we all just evolved from nothing, which makes no sense at all and is the biggest lie shared in our society today. It's insane because they will try to twist things all the time through this idea of evolution. They'll try to twist every little thing that they find to try to make it make evolution make sense and it's truly just twisting of things to try and make it seem logical and sensical because the devil is in charge of all this higher ups and he wants us to be confused in this life because he doesn't want us to find the true power in God and he wants us to be serving him just as the Sith do in Star Wars. And as this verse continues, it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Vader was seduced by the dark side of the Force. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I have so much faith in God because I know that he is the one that taught me all these things. It wasn't just in my own power that I came to know all these things, which I plan to continue to share on this channel, but it was through his power that he taught me these things and he cleared things up for me in my mind so that I could know more and learn more about him. And this is the knowledge that he has given me. It's not something that people who are trying to deceive me or control me 
fed to me. It's something I found on my own time and in my own way that God revealed to me to himself. And we need more Christian people to rely on God like that. We need every Christian person that is alive to rely solely on God more because that will open up the doorway in your life for so much wonder and for God to work through you in so many miraculous ways and to speak to you in so many miraculous ways because you are focused and steadied and you know, you've been your foundation on the strength which is him not on the strength of what others can tell you or explain to you that this means this or that means that I mean of course there's a lot of things that I've learned through life from other people who are very smart and talented and know a lot about God but that is not my soul learning place my soul learning place comes from believing in God and asking him every step of the way to bring the people into my life who can clear things up for me as I go and that is something that is so important and so valuable to remember that there's many people trying to deceive you throughout your life even in these movies and TV shows as they said trying to seduce you into the dark side into thinking that it's okay and it's all right but you have to remember in your own mind that you need to think for yourself and you need to realize when things are leading you in a bad direction by being connected to the force by being connected to God so that he can lead you to good things that he has planned for you in your life you have to remember to never let liars or manipulators get the best of you or cause you to become consumed in worry or fear or frantic about your own decisions. You have to always be thinking logically and leaning on the truth that you've come to know, especially through God. And even if you haven't come to know the truth through God yet, you have to ask him to show you that truth because he does exist. He does exist and he makes a way for everyone who wants to find away to him. He listens to your prayers and he knows who you are. And you know what? Whether he's the God of Christianity or not, in your view right now, you may not believe he is the God of Christianity. But I know in my heart that he is. His true identity is in the God of Christianity and in Jesus Christ, his son. That is his true identity. And if you ask him, I am certain that he will show you that, that is his true identity. And don't allow yourself to be brainwashed by manipulators or people who think they know it all and have it all together, especially when we in this life are such small specks compared to the grand scheme of the universe. We need to focus on what is greater than us ourselves so that we can reach and get there and know where we're supposed to be going and who we're supposed to be listening to because there's a million different voices telling you a million different things but you have to quiet them and ask God himself who he is and he will show himself to you and then he will reveal himself that he is the God of Christianity because I know he is because that is exactly what he's done for me. Click the video now if you want to see my deep dive into the very nature of the Force and learn how incredibly strong the power Jedi find through it truly is.